Yasser Arafat was a hero of the Palestinian uprising against the Israeli occupation. He's one of the founders of the political faction Fatah and fought with the organization against Israel in the aim of liberating Palestine. Fatah gained control of the Palestine Liberation Organization with Arafat as its leader. He eventually signed the Oslo Accords with Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin in September 1993, which created the promise of peace. But 26 years 26 years later, there's still no resolution to the Israel-Palestine conflict and settlement expansion continues. Arafat died in 2004 from what was reported to be a month-long illness, but an Al Jazeera investigation in 2012 found Arafat was poisoned by radioactive toxins. Yossi Balin is a former minister of justice in Israel and joins us now from Tel Aviv. Thank you so much for your time. So that moment in 1993, the Oslo Accords, there, obviously there are critics that would say it was flawed, but it was it was an inflection point. Um, since then, is it, is it clear to you that the two-state solution is dead? Well, what do you say? <laughs> no, it is not dead. There is no alternative. I mean, uh, there is no one-state solution, neither for the Palestinians and nor for Israel. Both peoples deserve their own states, and uh, I believe that eventually this will happen, and not in 100 years from now, but much less than that. Um, Yasser Arafat, uh, as it was now said, uh, was an icon, was a re revolutionarist, and uh, more than a state builder, that's it for sure. He uh, made something which was unique, and uh, we'll remember it for that, by bringing the Palestinian issue uh, to, the, to the world knowledge, uh, high on the agenda, uh, much more than, than before him. And that was, of course, very important for the Palestinian people. For us as Israelis, his decision in 88 uh, and the National uh, uh, Palestinian Council uh, decision in Algiers uh, was very, very important. This was, I believe, the, the real milestone in which the Palestinian leadership admitted it, its mistake by rejecting the partition uh, UN resolution in 47 rather than having already then two states and preventing the war of 48 and the, the ramifications on the, of this war for the Palestinians and also for the Israelis, but mainly for the Palestinians and for the Arab states. Uh, eventually in 88, he said, okay, 47 uh, should be the, the, the basis and uh, we are ready to accept UN Resolution 242 and to change our policy. And that was the opening for the relations between the PLO and the United States. And later on, when I began the Oslo process, that was a, 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 the basis also uh, for, our, uh, for our process, which was uh, distorted by, by the extremists on both sides who were not ready for peace okay, let and me, for a partition. Let me ask you this. You said that, that the the two-stage solution isn't dead. Perhaps the idea of it isn't, but are, are we further away from it than we were 15 years ago? I don't think so. I think okay. that it is the other way around. In many ways, the two-state solution became a consensus, both in Palestine, in Israel, and in the world. It was not the case years ago. Okay. <laughs> Um, it, the, the Palestinians obviously are, are more fragmented, more divided than they were um, before. Do you see um, any type of this pathway? Is true. Do you see any type of pathway for there to be um, a, a unifying leader that at least Arafat was at one time? Is that, is that necessary? Is that, that type of figure called for? Well, I believe that a Palestinian, a Palestinian unity is important not only for the Palestinians, but also for Israel. I believe that for those who believe in peace, the division in the Palestinian camp is devastating. And I hope that it would be possible, but of course on a basis which will respect the decisions, the, the legitimate and formal decisions of the Palestinian leadership. Yossi Bellin, thank you so much for your insight. We appreciate it joining us from Tel Aviv.